everyone, it's Pinmark. And before I start, this picture here should look pretty familiar. It's because the person who commissioned me last time is asking for a part two for that picture. So I will just be working on it and talking about what comes up spontaneously. Because like I mentioned in the last video, I need to stay on track and get more work done. So these won't really be planned at this point until I have time to plan one. So right now it's just a live stream without the live, as I've said many times now. But, all right, so jumping right in. I am pulling up references, as you can see here, because I always need some reference to look at. It helps. It helps a lot. And as you can see, I have so many folders. And I try to keep everything organized. I'm not the most organized person, but I try to keep track of at least these art projects. Now, I'm adding food to this table that you should recognize from before. And one thing I think I can actually bring up right now is this character is going to have uh, some food on the table. And uh, as I'm putting it here, it's kind of hard to see it against all the other objects. So I, one trick I like to do is get a blank color that's, that stands up against the rest of the picture and do this. So for that moment, as I paint the object, it's easy to see. And then later on, oh, later on, I can just pull that away and it'll look good. So, yeah. I'm going to be drawing french fries here. Or potato wedges, if you will. Okay. I'll try to zoom in as much as I can, and you get myself in the habit of keeping you guys in mind as I draw. And like I said, I've got a picture here right now that I'm just loosely following. I'm not trying to literally copy it because that just makes you lazy. Then you're relying on other pictures to tell you what to do, and you don't want that. Okay. And I'm just putting in... I'm keeping my paintbrush at around 50. That tends to be my favorite opacity because any lower and it takes forever for the color to show up. Like if I were to go up 10%, you can't even tell I'm putting any color there until I constantly, constantly draw and then it finally shows up. So that's no good. But any higher, if I make to like 70% opacity, it becomes a little too bold and I can't blend that well. So I like 50. It's a pretty good opacity for blending but it still shows up well. And see, like, I just do a couple strokes and it already shows up pretty well, so... I go by 50 most of the time. I just heard a crow outside. And I just got back from the store, which was also kind of nice, because I tend to stay in my house all the time. So... Getting outside, getting some fresh air, talking to strangers, as scary as it may be, is actually kind of nice. So, yeah. Another thing that's kind of coming up when I watch these videos, when I re-watch them after I've recorded them, I can't handle watching myself talk because of my accent. I know it shouldn't be that big a deal, but I don't know. It just occurs to me. I see uh, so many people online who have, like, the uh, the neutral American accent. I guess is what you, I know there's another word for it, but that's all I can think of right now. And... Yeah, whenever uh, I hear myself recording, I've just got such a uh, slurred speech. I mean, I'm proud to be who I am. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't know. I just I hear it and I'm like, ugh, I need to work on that. I need to articulate a little bit better. I mean, unless you guys don't mind it, because, yeah, I'm trying to stay relaxed around everybody when I'm playing these videos. So. Well, recording, whatever. And sorry if you hear noisy neighbors. I have a neighbor who likes to work on his car, and he revs that engine a lot, and it's loud. Okay, I'm adding orange into these potato wedges, because they aren't quite yellow. They're, there's a little more of a orange-brown shade to them. I'll zoom in more for you, because I love you guys. Here we go. Now, technically, when looking at the reference, the container holding these potato wedges is 
a blue basket with white paper. And even though, yes, most people would want to jump straight into bold white, because, hey, it's white paper. Keeping in mind the atmosphere of the room, white shouldn't show up as a completely, you know, total brightness as white as possible. You want to keep it matching the environment. Like these napkins here were a light blue, but most of it's kind of obscured in shadow. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. Uh, color theory like that with lighting and all that takes a while to get used to. You kind of have to experiment. And I will admit, digital art makes it real a lot easier to change and edit. So I guess there is that advantage. But you know, when actually when it comes to the advantage of digital art, kind of a, what is it, a double-edged sword? Because there's then a higher standard with your digital art. People then expect digital art to be perfect. So, I mean, and it has its own challenges. It takes a while to get good at digital art because, like, eye-hand coordination with a tablet and all that, like, it still has its own challenges, so... And actually, I did see some comments already about a new subject to do, so I will do that as soon as I have the chance. Right now, I have to stick with uh, commissions. Yeah, I'm adding some light colors here. Sorry, I'll zoom in more. There we go. I'm uh, adding some ambient light here, and, and that's the thing when it comes to, like, doing painterly stuff and trying to get lighting right. When you don't have line art, you have to rely on lighting to make objects show up better. So... I'm adding some ambient light on the sides of objects because typically you don't have a, you know the black edge along the object. You have to rely on contrast. So, okay, and the piece of white paper here that has the uh, restaurant's name on it is. Uh, going to be darker towards the right side because I think the right side of the room is a little bit darker. And, yeah. and honestly, it's okay to when you're setting up a painting use some black lines like this because it can help keep track of objects and then later on you can blend away those black lines to be closer to the actual object. You know, the color that the object actually is. French fries, potato wedges, I don't know what else they're called in other places, but the ones that are further back I guess are going to be darker because they're covered up by the other potato wedges, so they'll be a little darker. Yeah, there we go, that's, that's helping, that's helping them show up a bit. Well, I'm about to add some lighting on the edges of these potato edges because of ambient light. And helps them show up a little bit better. And they, they look all crisp and stuff. So that's good. Boop a doo. Okay. I don't want to overdo it, and I'll sometimes bring back this. Which now I might need to change colors. Just a random color. Something that helps it show up. There we go. Maybe a slightly darker shade. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't really shown that trick yet, but it's really nice. Because now I can easily see my object if I can color on the right layer. Mm, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm adding the ambient light around an object. It's also known as rim lighting. Ha ha, that word. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, known as rim lighting because along the edge of the object, the rim of it, you get kind of a... How to put it technically? There's just a lot of ambient light from the surrounding objects in the room bouncing off each, all the other objects. And when it reaches your object along the edge, you get a bit of light. So that's what's going on. And yeah, so there we go. Bit of a shadow being cast from that paper on the basket, so that little tiny corner here is a lot darker right there. And it's technically like a woven pattern 
in there, so I'm adding like little squares to do the woven pattern. And to make them 3D, I'm gonna add a light color along the edge. It's all about geometric shapes. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like, no matter what you are drawing, or painting, or sculpting, I mean anything really, start with basic shapes. Don't jump in details. Unless you're really comfortable, if you're unsure at all, or you're still trying to figure out how to plan something, especially complicated poses, or weird objects, use simple shapes first. Start with circles and squares. It makes it so much easier. And I guess I'm kind of at a point now where it's not really always circles and squares. It'll also turn into just blobs. But I'm keeping it simple. And that makes it easier to think as I draw. Yeah, that. Okay. So how are you guys doing? I know some of you in the comments, and I'm just starting to meet others, but I like seeing familiar faces already, reoccurring faces, that's nice. Anyone new in the comment section? Hello, welcome. You're free to talk. This is a happy zone. You don't have to worry about being cool enough. Cause I mean, look at me. <laughs> I'm a silly. But I like to be nice to you guys. And you guys are nice to me, so... That makes it all worthwhile. Okay. Those are the french fries. I'm gonna keep calling them french fries, I can't help it, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get myself to say potato wedges, but I never say potato wedges. That's... It's not a weird term to me. I hear people say that around here, but... I don't know. It's just not what I'm used to. To me, anything that's <laughs> chopped up potatoes and then fried is french fries. So, yeah. I'm a weirdo. Yeah, looking at this reference a little bit better, I think there's supposed to be some paper along the back of it too. It's at an angle. What I need to do is take that away and look at the perspective. Yeah, it's at an angle, so I need to, uh, for one thing, I need to correct it. There we go. That's a little better. And add some paper in the back here. Yeah. It's going to be a bit darker, so it's a darker gray. And honestly, most of the french fries are covering it up, so you can't really see it. But I'm matching the perspective just well enough so that you can see you can see the three-dimensional shape of the object. And I guess that's why I always stress the 3D shapes a lot. I know I repeat myself a lot with that, but it just makes everything easier. Because if I think of this as a square, and you get so comfortable drawing 3D shapes that you can draw a square, a cube I should say. You can draw a cube at any angle. It just makes everything easier, because then I kind of loosely think of this potato wedge basket as a cube. I just kind of think of it as a rectangular prism. And so when it's a cube, I know how to draw a cube. Cubes are easy. So then this object becomes easy. I'm basically just shading this stuff now, making sure the colors kind of blend. Um, and then I know the logo is kind of a red. I'll take a light red. Yeah, something like that. Mm, let's kind of mute the red. If you want to go for realism, a lot of things tend to be a muted color. And muted just means... Let me get that really easy for you to see. Oh, it doesn't zoom in. Oh no. Anyway, this is saturated colors. When colors are far on the right here, up in that corner, and then as they get closer to gray, they are getting muted. So that's muted. Muted reds. And saturated reds. And that's the same with any color. This just means dark. This means muted. So I'm gonna go for a muted red somewhere around there. And that helps it be a little more realistic. So here's the label. 
logo. I'll need to check my reference. The uh, commissioner has a specific word they want there, but for now it's a placeholder. I'm putting just the red. Make sure it's in the right place. Make sure I chose the right shade, which I think I did. Looks good. Okay, that's basically what the logo is going to be. So you can see a little bit closer. See, I'm just keeping it a vague shape. There's this middle part here where the actual word is going to be. And I'm just going up and down a lot, so that's like vague placement of words, so it's easy for me to recognize, and there will be another shape behind it. And my first stroke doesn't have to be correct. I have con I have my my hand by control Z all the time. So I'll easily go, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, closer, uh, getting there. Okay, now I'm actually trying. Yeah, that, that's pretty close. Yeah, oh. It's hard to decide sometimes, but... Okay, that's close enough. And you don't have to do one long, perfect stroke. Like I said, with sketching, you can kind of scribble, scribble. You can do like stroke, 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 stroke. You can do lots of little tiny marks that all create the illusion of a perfect line. So yeah, when I hear people make the... Uh, the joke of, oh man, I can't draw. I can't even draw a stick figure. I can't even draw a line. Well, neither can I. I do lots of little lines that make it look like it's a good line. So, those are excuses. You can do it. You can do it. You can get better. All right. Um, yeah, you get the idea. There's where the logo will be, and it'll be easy for me to go in and use some other colors to like add the word when I figure out what the word is. So yeah, there we go. And, 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 I'm going to add the reflection because this is a table, a glass table. So I duplicated the layer, so now there's two. And the one underneath, I can move, see? And now I'll basically just flip it and I'll go up to the top right here. You can't really see, but I'm going up that way. And at the top right, it has a measure for, I'm going to go negative 100 for the proportions, and that will flip it horizontally. See? That's technically I then need to fix the angle because, okay, let's go, let's, let's look at this. The way a box works, if it's doing the reflection of it, it's going to be like that. I hope that blue shows up, but it is going out like this. I'll zoom in a little more. There we go. Okay. It goes back and has this shape. Okay. And the paper. Now, this angle with the potato wedges, we can see inside the basket. But if you think about the reflection, you wouldn't be able to see the potato wedges much. So all we'll get to see of them is just a tiny bit like this, barely peeking over the edge. That's all the amount we're going to see. And again, I'm keeping my opacity for my brush at about 50. See how I've laid it out? And then I'll get a blue that basically matches using the color picker to make sure I get the right blue. And I'll get the same ambient light that was there. And I'll blend it so it'll be more like that. Got those little got those little holes in the basket. And as you can see, I can kind of look at it and go, I think I made that a little too tall, so I'm going to squish it down. There we go, that's closer. Okay. That'll work. And as you can see, I'm then trying to basically reflect it. And I know I did the uh, flip earlier, but then when you look at the flip, it is it is a quick fix. If I wanted to just get on with it, I can, I can just use that and lower the opacity and be like, that's basically the reflection. Done. But if I want to be accurate, I need to do it this way because 
This one, you can see the fries, and you wouldn't see that many fries from that angle if it were a reflection from the table at that angle. So to be accurate, it would be this. And then I can lower the opacity, it'll still be a reflection there. So, hey, you see what I'm doing there? All right, I drew fries, I drew potato wedges. You got to see that. I will be back to this, maybe depending on what your guys' comments are. So leave suggestions and questions if you have anything in mind. So that will help me know what you guys are after. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. This video was a little long, but if you guys enjoy it, I'll do episodes this long. Uh, that should be it for now. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and this has been Mark. See you next time.